one of the things we're going to touch on tonight, one of the topics we're going to think about, wisdom. And where do we get it from? Where do we get our wisdom from? Where does the world get it from? I mean, some of the places we get it from are the uh, books we read in kindergarten. Dr. Seuss. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Don't feed blinks, pink ink. Don't, don't feed blinks, pink ink. Yeah, not blinks, blinks. Winks, whatever. I didn't read that one, sorry. I was looking for the Cliff Notes. Um, Cliff Notes version of Dr. Seuss, that'd be awesome. Um, other places we get it from are, what was it, uh, Robert Fulgham wrote a book called Everything I Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Watch both ways before you cross the street. Always go with a friend. Clean up after you make a mess. Stuff like that. Other places we get wisdom from are uh, fortune cookies. How many of you have ever read your fortune cookie and go, wow, that's deep. Yeah. And then, of course, sometimes I read, I was at work one day. This is a rabbit trail, so I'm going to admit it. Um, I was at work one day working at Sharon Williams, and I had just finished classes. I was studying for a class while I was working at Sharon Williams and thinking about what I needed to do at church. And I opened up my fortune cookie, and it says, You are very busy. At least I ain't now. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know that before. So. G.I. Joe is another place where we get our wisdom from. Uh, knowing is half the battle, if you've ever heard that. Wisdom it comes from many places. It comes from many sources. But we're, tonight we're going to be talking about the person who was known as the wisest man ever. Solomon, yes. King Solomon. King Solomon, give you a brief history of this man. He was the son of King David, right? Which we, I don't know, have we heard about him lately? Maybe. Yeah. We may have talked about him once or twice. He was the son of King David and the wife of Uriah. Yeah. I see how you were phrasing that. He was the son of King David and the wife of Uriah. That's how the the uh, genealogy of Jesus puts him out there. And so he wasn't the oldest brother, the oldest son of David. He wasn't even like, he was close to the bottom of the list of, of kids. But since he royally messed up Bathsheba's <laughs> life really? and did that thing with Uriah, he decided, he made a promise that Solomon, that one of her children, and Solomon in particular, would be the next king. And he stuck to his promise. And Solomon is well known. He's one of, he's probably the second most celebrated king in the history of Israel, next to David. But he didn't really do a lot. So we're not gonna, this is not gonna be a long sermon a long talk, but we're going to look at the life of King Solomon, and we're going to look at what he did right and where he went wrong, and hopefully do that within a 20-minute time span, and our, our prompt, I'll try not to keep you any longer than that, and if you feel like stop listening, stop, if you stop listening to me, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Just if Carl falls asleep back there, Christy Hill. Or Kaylee, you take care of that one of the <laughs> That's Tuesday. We already talked about <laughs> the title. The title of my sermon is called The Rise and Fall of King Solomon. So, and it starts, and we're going to start in chapter 3 of 1 Kings. So, if you have your Bible, we're going to start in 1 Kings chapter 3. I will try to take you systematically through it so we're not jumping around a lot through this. Through, and through, through the chapters, and we're going to end in 1 Kings chapter 11. So, whew, that's going to be, a, that's, a, that's too many scriptures, but we're, we'll, we won't, we'll read some of it, we'll read most of it, we won't read all of it, I promise. So, King Solomon, 
he was he was known as a wise man, all right? And we're going to investigate his wisdom. We're going to see where he got his wisdom from, why he's considered a wise man, what did he do, and then we're going to see, like I said, where he messed up. So we're going to start with 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. And I'm going to go ahead and just read that part. <clears throat> we're going to start with verse 3. It says, Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for it was the great high place. Solomon used to offer thousand, a, thousand, a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God asked, Ask what I shall give you. How many of you would love to have God come knocking on your door like you just rubbed a magic lamp and says, whatever you want right now, I'm going to give you. Me, me, me too. You're already thinking, this is what I'd ask for. Uh, what, what, a million dollars? A uh, enemies destroyed? Um, uh, a college degree without even trying. Right? <laughs> Uh, A's on all my next tests. You know, all those, you know, you can think of all these things. And Solomon said, verse 6, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in right uprightness of heart toward you. And you've kept him, kept for him his great and steadfast love. You have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O oh Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. You're like, come on, Solomon, get to the point. Okay, and it says, Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your, govern your people, that I might discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? God among, he's saying basically, God among everything else, above everything else. Give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. I don't think Solomon needed, needed to pray that prayer exactly like that. He did anyway. He asked for it. I think he was a wise man already. One of the things I learned in undergrad in college was uh, the first year of your freshman, your freshman year, your professor's job is to teach you that you don't know anything. Right? You get that feeling when you're sitting in there? They're like, they're teaching you, yeah, I don't know anything. You. And the next year, they start teaching you the stuff that you you need to know to know how to know things. You got that? I mean, I, I, I don't. <laughs> they teach you how to learn, and then your next two years, they actually teach you what you're supposed to know. <laughs> That's college in a nutshell. But Solomon would, didn't have to have God teach him that he didn't know anything. Solomon was wise enough to realize, I don't know nothing. I know nothing that I need to know to govern these people. I don't know how to do this job. I don't know how to be a king. God, give me the wisdom and the knowledge to learn how to know how to be a good, wise king. Wow. That was a smart man. He was wise before he even asked that question. To know that you don't know something is the first step of knowledge. To know we don't have all the answers instead of somebody asks you a question and you start giving them an answer. One of the greatest things anybody's ever told me when I asked them a question was, I don't know. Well, let's go find out. If I asked you a question and you told me an answer that wasn't the right answer, then I'd be upset with you. If you ever ask me a question, I don't know. I pray I don't find an answer for you. I don't make something up. Because that's just not right. That would be wrong. The opposite of right. There we go. 
<clears throat> and how did God respond to this? He said, it pleased the Lord, verse 10, chapter 3, verse 10. It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself a long life or riches or life beyond your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise, discerning mind, so that none of you, so that none like you has ever been before you, and none like you shall ever rise after you. Amazing, right? I'm sitting there, you know, sitting there and listening. I can imagine Solomon hearing that God says, you didn't ask for life or riches. Dang it. I could have asked for life and riches. Don't. <laughs> But God was so pleased with this stuff. And it says, and if you, in verse 13, it says, I give you also what you have not asked for, both riches and honor, so that no king shall compare with you in all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days.